uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Leo Bao. Uh, so thanks for joining my talk and uh, thanks uh, the organizers for organizing this uh, wonderful event. So today I'm gonna talk about how to use insider information to deter crime. Uh, and this work is joined with my supervisors, Lata Gengad Harun and Matthew Lester. So let me start with a bit motivation. So criminals usually have insider information regarding other people's behavior. Uh, and this insider information can usually be captured by social networks uh, like this one. So the linked players uh, can observe each other's behavior. And sometimes uh, policemen will do some random checks. Uh, for example, this policeman is checking the boot of someone's car and find out oh, this person is a drug dealer. Uh, however, this policeman usually does not know the drug dealer network in this area. So here motivates our research question that how can we uh, leverage and utilize insider information uh, to, to deter crime upon finding one suspect. So we propose the peer informed audit mechanism. We will refer to this as a PIA for short thereafter. So uh, such that this uh, randomly caught suspect is incentivized to review insider information about these networks. So let me uh, elaborate uh, using a theoretical framework. So we consider M players uh, connected by an exogenous crime network who are about to engage in a criminal activity. So in the first stage, each player, player I decides uh, the level of crime to engage and then receive a corresponding benefit for committing this crime. And we assume this benefit function pi of EI is uh, increasing and concave. Uh, uh, and also we assume that player I observe any linked player J's decision with some noise. So player I observe EJ hat, which is the true level committed by J plus uh, some error. So this error is crucial to have a well-behaved Nash equilibrium in our setup. And then in the second stage, uh, the regulators will randomly uh, audit or check a player from the group and then determine which player should be punished. And this really depends on the enforcement mechanism. So in the baseline, we consider that this audited player pays a fine. So in this case, uh, no insider information is used. And on our peer informed audit mechanism, uh, this audited player can choose to challenge one linked player to, in order to get away with the fine. And of course, uh, I can choose to not challenge, then he or she must pay the fine as the baseline, but this is not the good strategy, because if I does challenge, then whoever is uh, more responsible for the crime is uh, punished. So this, this gives uh, player I some opportunity to uh, uh, not pay the fine. So in short, player I's payoff function has two parts. The first part is uh, the benefit from committing the crime. And the second part is the potential fine he or she must pay. So, uh, so we examine this uh, mechanism using a lab experiment. Uh, so in the interest of time, I only discuss uh, one short game here, but we did conduct a repeated game, which is identical to the one-shot game, except that a fixed group uh, of participants interact with each other for 20 rounds. And only one of these 20 rounds is selected for payment purpose. And uh, we conduct all sessions at the treatment level. So we read out the instruction slot and uh, uh, the rule of play is therefore common knowledge among all participants. So in total, we have 300 participants and this experiment was conducted at Monash Lab of Experimental Economics uh, before the outbreak of COVID. Uh, so the average earning is 25 Australian dollars for each participant. So in the baseline, after everyone selects their crime level in the first stage, the computer will randomly pick uh, one of these five people for punishment. And on the, our peer informed audit mechanism, uh, actually in the second stage, uh, these players uh, are given a chance to challenge one of the linked players. 
for example, uh, in the star network, if a free free player is a challenge, uh, it's, it's randomly checked by police, then he or she can uh, challenge the center player. However, if the center player is checked by police, he or she can challenge uh, one of these four free free players. So this resembles some uh, gang group in Chicago. And also we consider a circular network uh, where this randomly audited player can challenge one of her two neighbors. So this uh, resembles some neighborhood watch scheme where the observability is constrained by a geographic proxy. And also we can consider a complete network where this randomly checked player can challenge anyone else in the group. And this may resemble some cartel wheel where these firms know each other very well. Okay, and we choose a simple set of parameters in the experiment. We have five players in each group and the crime level each player can choose is between zero to 40. So we have this range because they are action, they bear the full consequence of their action. And also we assume the benefit function takes this functional form e to the power of 0.7. So it's increasing and concave on the crime level. And we also assume that uh, this observation error follow a uniform distribution with support of between negative 10 and positive 10. And also uh, the observed crime level is the true level plus this, uh, uh, this noise. And also we assume the fine is a linear on this observed crime level. So now let me jump into the calculation of uh, the Nash equilibrium. So the underlying principle is quite simple. So we must equate the marginal benefits to the marginal uh, expected fine. So here it's quite straightforward. Uh, under the baseline, uh, the left hand the left hand side is the marginal benefit. And on the right hand side with one over n probability, a player I is randomly caught by police and then have to pay a fine. So we need to solve uh, this EI star for everyone. And on our PIA mechanism, it's the same thing with a little bit trick. So we do a backward induction first. So in stage two, the dominant strategy for this randomly checked player is to challenge the, the link play, player with the highest observed crime level. So this gives him or her the best chance to get away with the fine. And in the first stage, knowing that everyone else will play this strategy, then each player must equate the marginal benefit to the marginal expected fine. So the left-hand side remains the same as the baseline, but on the right hand side, there are two channels that the player I may end ended up paying the fine. So first with the one over n probability, player I is randomly caught by police, and then he or she may fail to challenge one of his or her neighbors and ended up paying the fine. And the second channel is that one of uh, I's neighbor is actually caught, and then uh, his or her neighbor challenged player I and the player I ended up being liable for the fine. Okay, so we have this uh, uh, two lines, each represents one scenario. And if we sum these two marginal uh, up, we get the total marginal expected fine on the right hand side. Then we solve for uh, the equilibrium crime level. So given this intuitions, so we have the following theoretical prediction. So first we compare the crime level in the baseline uh, with the, the crime level in our PIA treatments with three network structures. As we can see that our mechanism reduced the crime level in all network structures we consider. And also hypothesis two, uh, within these uh, three network treatments, we find the star should have higher crime level than circular than complete. And hypothesis three, Within the star network, the periphery player should uh, commit more crimes than the star center. So we observe that the crime level depends on the network structure and the position in the network. So intuitively in our setup, 
uh, each link represents a piece of insider information to be used against this player in the second stage. Okay, so therefore, the more links uh, a player has, uh, the more the less crime this player should commit. So complete the network has uh, more links than uh, circle and star. Therefore, complete the network should have a lower crime level. And also star periphery players have uh, less links than the center. So star periphery should produce more crime than the star center. So let me jump into the results. So as per, so, so let's first look at this figure. So the red bars is the Nash predictions from the previous figure. And the blue bars represents the actual data we observed in the lab. So we first compare the crime level in the baseline with the crime level in three network treatments. And we find our mechanism can successfully deter crime and from 30 units to somewhere near 20 units. So then we uh, have a look at hypothesis two, uh, which predicts that the star has higher than, uh, than circular and the circular has higher than complete, which uh, we observe qualitatively true in our data, but uh, any pairwise comparison are not statistically significant. And also we look at uh, uh, the comparisons between star center and star periphery players it's actually at the wrong direction as predicted by the Nash. Okay, so we have a tick on hypothesis one, uh, question marks on hypothesis two and three. We also show very briefly the results based on repeated game uh, because these uh, results are very similar to the previous slide. So we first uh, find that the baseline has, uh, has a higher level than all three other treatments. However, there's uh, no statistically different, uh, statistically different uh, difference uh, between these uh, three uh, treatments with our peer informed audit mechanism. And also we look at uh, the star center and the star periphery players. So as uh, in the previous slides, in the first round center player actually produced more than the star periphery players, contrary to the, uh, to the Nash. Uh, but then the star center gradually uh, learned how to play uh, nicely, but uh, there's not much change in the behavior of uh, star preferences. So we do find uh, quite a bit of discrepancy between the Nash predictions and, uh, and the data. And we were wondering why. So we explored the data a little bit further. First, we find the participants' uh, GPA inferences uh, participants' choice in this uh, PIA treatment. So participants with higher GPA actually produce less crime, which is closer to the Nash predictions. And the second, we asked an uh, open-end question in the post-experimental questionnaire, where we ask, uh, please describe uh, the strategy you used uh, when selecting the crime level in the first stage. And we find many reports similar strategies as level K reasoning uh, in the treatments with uh, peer-informed audit mechanism. So we find 5% uh, of them say, said something that, okay, the, the probability of being fine is purely random. So they failed to see the link between the crime level and the probability of being fine. And most others uh, said something like, uh, okay, I, I tried to uh, commit uh, less crime than my neighbors in order to avoid the fine in second stage. Uh, so with this intuition, so we uh, explore a level K reasoning model. So rather than assuming all players have the same level of sophistication as Nash. So in this model, we assume that any given player believes uh, that all other players have one lower reasoning ability than her own and then best response to such beliefs. So in our experiment, in our model, we assume that level zero actually uh, plays the same strategy as the Nash uh, in the baseline because they fail to see the link between the crime level and the probability of being fine. And then level K players best respond to level K minus one players. And here in this uh, figure, we plot uh, the predictions based on 
this level k model. So in the baseline, your action should not be affected by other players' action because uh, the probability of being found is always uh, one over n. So it's uh, purely random. However, in our PIA mechanisms, uh, as we can see that the crime level reduced monotonically as the uh, le sophistication level increase and converge to Nash. And also interestingly, we find that, for example, uh, in Nash, we predict that the complete uh, network treatment should have lower uh, crime level than star, but this is a reverse uh, in the level K model when the sophistication level is very low. Okay, so intuitively uh, in level K model, uh, the more links you have, the more opportunity you can exploit other players in your group. So that's uh, different from uh, the incentives I discussed earlier. So we do find that the level K reasoning actually interacts with the level K structure in a very interesting way. And also the takeaway from this uh, model is that our mechanism still improves compliance, but the magnitude really depends on the sophistication levels of participants. And then I uh, briefly show you this uh, histogram of the crime levels in circular and complete networks against uh, the level K model predictions, which is uh, this dotted lines. So we find um, very few participants actually are close to level zero. Uh, most of them are between level one and level two, and some are close to Nash equilibrium. So this is uh, very close uh, to the common findings in the literature uh, of le level K literature without a network structure. Okay, to sum up, uh, so we propose a PIA mechanism, which uh, in theory deters crime more effectively than the baseline mechanism in any non empty network. And what we find is that the crime level in our uh, PIA treatments is 30% lower than the baseline. Uh, but uh, we do find uh, some discrepancies between Nash and uh, the actual data we observed. Then we explore a level K model to explain these uh, puzzles. So we find the effectiveness of our mechanism really depends on the sophistication levels of players. The more sophisticated they are, the more effective our mechanism is. And uh, we also find the level K reasoning uh, actually interact with uh, these network structures and can form predictions which is opposite to Nash. So let me uh, finish uh, uh, by linking our paper to the literature. First, we contribute to uh, uh, the literature studying deterrence mechanism, especially leniency programs. So we are able to address some uh, concerns with the leniency programs. Uh, for example, the literature finds that uh, firms sometimes will form sacrificial cartels and apply leniency in less valuable products to reduce the conviction in more valuable products. So we cut this channel because we only punish uh, these people who is observed to be more guilty. And also we add a network structure which may capture some realistic features. Uh, we also contribute to this fast growing literature studying social networks. Uh, for example, my discussant Avi uh, he has uh, several wonderful papers uh, using experiments uh, to find that network structures actually uh, play a crucial uh, role uh, in many key economic outcomes. And also we contribute to the level key reasoning literature. Uh, so so based, on my, based on the best of my knowledge, we are the first to build a level key model uh, with uh, network structures and as I have discussed, that we find that there are some interesting interactions between uh, level K reasoning uh, and the network structures. Okay, so that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. If you would like to download this paper, please uh, scan this QR code. Uh, my name is uh, Leo Bao, Zhenyang Bao. Uh, if you wanna hire, hire me, please send me an email. If you wanna discuss anything with me, please send me an email. Uh, thank you so much.